This is Ling 270, Language, Technology, and Society. In Marvel Studios' 2011 film, Thor, the character Thor arrives in New Mexico on Earth from the realm of Asgard. His arrival is marked by a large circle on the ground filled with strange symbols. Midway through the film, Agent Philip J. Coulson arrives on the scene to investigate, along with other members of S.H.I.E.L.D., the secret organization of which they are members. Coulson kneels down before the symbols, calling out, Get somebody from linguistics down here. Coulson believes that S.H.I.E.L.D.'s linguists may be able to determine the meaning of the strange symbols. Let's review what those linguists will know about writing as a system of symbols. They will know that every writing system is a system of symbols, and that the choice of those symbols is essentially arbitrary. They will know that conventions assign meaning to symbols. And they will know that in human languages, each symbol represents an element of language. In other words, writing is a system of symbols, convention assigns meaning to those symbols, and each symbol represents an element of language. But these are alien symbols. So what would the process look like if these last two statements didn't apply to Asgardian symbols? In other words, what if convention did not assign meaning to symbols? What if each symbol did not represent an element of language? What if instead we ask, could there be a writing system where the meaning of the symbols is inherent rather than derived through convention, where each symbol represents an idea directly rather than an element of language? In other words, could there be meaningful symbols in the absence of conventions to assign meaning? It turns out these are not new questions. Humans have, in fact, asked these questions for hundreds of years. To find the origin of this question, we can go at least as far back as 17th century Europe. European scholars in the 17th century believed that there was a single original human language. They believed that this supposed language was created in the biblical Garden of Eden, and that in this language there would be a direct correspondence between words and ideas. These 17th century scholars believed that this supposed original human language was lost in the biblical destruction of the Tower of Babel. Many scholars at the time believed that the loss of this supposed original human language was the cause of many of 17th century Europe's problems, and that if a universal human language recovering the supposed properties of this original supposed lost language could be reconstructed, then many of society's problems would be assuaged. Some of the earliest discussions around this idea stemmed from a fundamental misunderstanding of the Chinese writing system. In his 1605 book, The Advancement of Learning, Francis Bacon wrote of his incorrect understanding of the Chinese writing system. Bacon wrote, And we understand further that it is the use of China and the kingdoms of the High Levant to write in characters real, which express neither letters nor words in gross, but things or notions. Insomuch as countries and provinces which understand not one another's languages can nevertheless read one another's writings, because the characters 
are accepted more generally than the languages do extend, and therefore they have a vast multitude of characters, as many, I suppose, as radical words. Francis Bacon incorrectly believed that there was a one-to-one -one correspondence in the Chinese writing system between ideas and symbols, and furthermore, that Chinese symbols did not incorporate elements of the Chinese language, but rather ideas that are language independent. Bacon was wrong. We see here a brief illustration of this where four Chinese symbols are illustrated, each of which contains part of the symbol, the symbol ma for horse. So the pronunciation ma is seen in the symbolic representation in these other three words. This search, however, continued throughout the remainder of the 17th century. Many intellectuals at the time got caught up in this search, including Gottfried Leibniz, who is otherwise well known for calculus, and John Wilkins. John Wilkins, in particular, published a 600-page ontology that attempted to lay out the ideas or concepts that would underlie such a system. So, could we have meaningful symbols without conventions? The idea was actually parodied, mocked, not that long thereafter, in Gulliver's Travels. In Gulliver's Travels, the author talks about, quote, a scheme for abolishing entirely all words. An expedient was therefore offered that since words are only names for things, it would be more convenient for all men to carry about them such things as were necessary to express a particular business they are to discourse on. In other words, for people to discuss rather than using the spoken word, people would carry around the actual objects that they wanted to refer to, and conversations would involve the direct use of these objects in lieu of words. Quote, I have often beheld two such sages almost sinking under the weight of their packs, like peddlers among us, who, when they met in the street, would lay down their loads, open their sacks, and hold conversation for an hour together, then put up their implements, help each other, resume their burdens, and take their leave. We can see from these attempts in 17th century Europe that this is a very non-trivial problem. And in fact, we know of no good way to have meaningful symbols without conventions. Nevertheless, let's take a look at three modern attempts that go at least part way towards attempting such a solution. None of them succeeded to any de great degree, but it will be useful for us to look at these as inform informative case studies. These three attempts are all described in the textbook, Language, Technology, and Society, that we're reading for this class. One attempt was made in order to build a better communication system. So in other words, a writing system whereby we could communicate with each other in a language-independent way. So this is very reflective of some of the motivations behind the 17th century attempts. So we will later take a look in more detail at this in a different video, the system of bliss symbolics. A 20th century system was attempted in a very limited scope by NASA in the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 programs. In these Voyager programs, a record was sent with sounds of Earth and pictures of Earth with the instructions encoded on a golden record. The symbols that you see here on this golden record were an attempt at a language and species independent communication system 
in order to provide potential aliens encountering the Voyager spacecraft with the instructions that they would need in order to access the sounds and images on the Golden Record. We will look at this as well in more detail in another video. And finally, we will look at another 20th century attempt at the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant program in New Mexico. In this program, humans in the United States attempted to come up with a communication mechanism to convey danger to descendants in the far distant future, up to 10,000 years from now. In all three of these cases, people were attempting to do exactly what we talked about earlier, come up with meaningful symbols without conventions, where symbols had inherent meaning and each symbol directly represented an idea. To the best of our knowledge, this is not generally possible, but in future videos, we will look in more detail at these three specific examples.